Hi friends, Caitlin here with Sass and Stitch Crochet and today I'm going to be walking you through a tutorial for the crochet puff quilt. I am so excited about this design. It turned out exactly how I wanted it to when I was thinking about it and yeah, I'm just so excited to share this with you. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to create each individual little square. Um, I'll teach you how to attach it to one long row and then I'll teach you how to attach that row onto the rest of your rows. You can make this quilt to be any size you like. Um, the blanket I'm working with, I made it into an 18 square by 18 square um, blanket, um, but you can make literally any size you want. Um, <laughs> this is my dog, Sassy. Hi, Sassy. If you're choosing to follow my pattern exactly, um, you will create three inch by three inch little squares, although the exact sp specific size doesn't truly matter if it's two and a half inches or three and a half inches, if it's a little bit off from my gauge, that is perfectly fine because you're sewing together as many squares as you want to make a blanket as large as you want. So, so again, I have three inch by three inch squares. Um, and this is basically going to be your gauge swatch. We don't need to make a gauge swatch because this is small enough to be your gauge. So I'm using, again, I'm using worsted weight yarn. I'm using a 5.0 millimeter hook. If you truly want your squares to be the same as mine, um, you can adjust your gauge to fit three by three. But again, aside from that, it's it can really be any size that you desire. I would try to stick around the three inch size. I think smaller or bigger is going to change the blanket a little bit. Uh, but again, that is up to you. So again, you'll need worsted weight yarn. Um, I worked completely out of yarn scraps. Um, that also includes projects that I was working on that I decided I didn't want to turn into a project anymore. So I'm taking those out and reusing that yarn. So again, worsted weight yarn, 5.0 millimeter hook or the hook you need to meet gauge. You'll need a yarn needle, uh, scissors, um, a measuring tape for you to measure your squares. And you'll need a lot of polyfill stuffing. I don't have a good estimate for you because I have about a 20 pound bag of stuffing and I've just been pulling stuffing out of that as I go. But you're gonna need a lot. Um, you'll probably need roughly, roughly this much per square, just a little, a little handful per square. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so like I said, I'm working with scrap yarn or unfinished projects, so I'm going to use this as my next square, the one that I'll teach you with. So we're gonna start out by making a slip knot. And the tail doesn't have to be super long. This is probably a little long for the tail, but this is fine. And I'll be showing you how to weave in your ends as you go, so you don't have to weave in three to 400 squares at the end of this. Um, it's actually pretty simple, and it's not as painful as you might think it is. Okay, so we're gonna start by chaining 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. And our squares are worked primarily in half double crochet. So we're going to start by skipping the first chain and doing a half double crochet into the second chain from the hook. One, and you're going to place one half double crochet in each chain to the end. So you should have 10 half double crochet by the end of this strip. Three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so ten half double crochet. And now we're going to turn this around and we're going to do the same thing on the other side of the chain. We're going to place one half double crochet in each chain again, just on the other side. So starting in this hole here, and what I'm gonna do as I'm going across is I'm going to hold my tail down across the row, and I'm going to crochet over this tail 
as well. So this is going to secure the tail right into this row. So that's one less um, tail that you have to weave in. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to go ahead and stop crocheting over my tail just so it doesn't get in my way later. So what you want to do if you choose to do this with your tail, go ahead and pull your tail tight so that it's not super loose or there's no like loops that got caught. But then after you do that, you want to pull your work back out again so the pulling of the tail doesn't tighten up your square. So now I'm very comfortable that my tail is nice and secure, so I'm going to just leave that alone for now. And do my last two half double crochet. So I have 10 on this side, 10 on this side, so I have a total of 20. And I'm going to slip stitch back to that first stitch. Chain one and turn your work. So now every round is going to have 20 half double crochet around and then we'll slip stitch to the front. So when you start your next round, you'll be skipping this first loop because this is your join stitch and you're going to be starting your count in the next section, in the next loop. One, two, three. And it doesn't really matter which way your work flips, whether it flips this way or whether it flips inward this way. I always do it so my tail lays inside of my square pocket. So you'll see a little bit better once I work this round and the next round what I'm talking about. Let me finish this one. It's a little hard to tell when you get to the ends but make sure you're working into the top loops, not one of these side loops. So kind of flip it, flip that corner so it's facing the right way, and this is the, these are the two top loops. If you have trouble keeping track of what stitch you started with, you can always place a stitch marker at the beginning of the round so you can easily keep track. But I promise the more you do these, the easier it will be to remember where that first stitch is placed. So my first stitch is right here. So I'm going to slip stitch to join. And I'm going to do one, a little bit of one more just to show you what I'm talking about with the tail being on the inside. So I just joined, chain one, and turn my work to start my next round of 20. And you can see here that I'm working along the outside of the pocket, whereas on the other row this would have been around the inside of the pocket. So I flipped, I flipped my, my pocket in a way that leaves the tail on the inside. So when I stuff it, I know that my tail is already secure with that first, with those 10 stitches that I crocheted around the tail. I know that my tail is secure and it's inside and I'm not going to see that tail ever again. I'm not going to have to worry about it. So that's how I take care of the starting tail. Okay, I'm coming up to the end of round three, so I'm placing stitch number 20. I'm going to slip stitch to my starting stitch chain one and turn. And I'm going to be making a total of eight rows. So when you're looking at the start of your work and how you're counting your rows, you can see on the bottom, you can see this split of the stitches are going in different directions. So this is where you start counting your rows. 
So this is row one, two, three, and I need a total of eight rows. So I'm going to keep going and I'll meet you back at the end of row eight. Okay, so I've just finished row eight. Again, I'll count with you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need to still do my slip stitch to join. And I'm going to fasten off now, but I want to measure a tail that's long enough for me to attach it to my next square. I'm going to measure the length of the top. I, I can just measure it with my yarn. I don't need a measuring tape for this part. So measure the length across your top and then the length down one of the sides. And then you want roughly triple, triple of that um, length to give you enough yarn to work with for seaming. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. I've got a nice long tail. I'm going to go ahead and pull that loop through like you would normally finish a crochet project. Okay, so now I'm ready to close up my square. Um, and I'm, so I'm going to take a little bit of stuffing. I personally like to stuff it a little bit and then uh, sew the top a little bit and then finish the stuffing right before I close it up completely. That's what I like to do. And I like to just kind of pull the polyfill so it's a little bit loose and kind of move it around so it's not in one big clump. Uh, let me stuff a little bit more. So, so far here's what I have. It's not overly puffy. You don't want it to be too heavily stuffed, but enough that it's going to be a little bit of a puff. So I'm going to start seaming and then I'll stuff in a little bit more. So I'm ready to take my yarn needle. I'm going to go ahead and attach my yarn to my yarn needle. Just with a little knot. And for seaming, I'm going to use the whip stitch. You are more than welcome to do any seaming method you want. I don't suggest doing a slip stitch closure. Um, it creates a ridge that will not look correct as you are attaching the rows together. So I recommend whip stitch or mattress stitch. But I'm going to show you the whip stitch. So basically what you do is you look at the top of your work and you're aligning your stitches so that you can go through one complete set of stitches. So I'm going to insert my yarn needle into this one and into this stitch on the other side. I'm going to pull, pull my yarn through. And I'm going to come back around to that same side into the next set of two stitches that are aligned up and pull my yarn through. You're going to keep doing that, always working from the same side. I'm going to do like two more stitches maybe before I finish up my seaming, or I finish up my stuffing. So I'm going to pause here for right now and put a little more stuffing into this opening before I close it all up. Just a touch more in this corner. Okay, now I'm ready to finish. So I'm going to keep doing that just through the tops of the stitches. It might You might accidentally catch another strand sometimes like that, and that's okay, but try to keep it just into the top of your stitches. And Okay, so now I'm at the end. Let's see, I have one more to do. One more in this little corner. Okay, so I'm at the end of the row. If this is the first square in my new row that I'm working on. I can go ahead and weave this tail in completely because I don't need to sew anything onto this side of the square. This is going to be the end of my row. So I can go ahead and take my yarn needle and the way that I weave in the ends when I have stuffing is I like to just insert my hook through the work just randomly anywhere um, and kind of run it through the stuffing a little bit. 
hold there. I'm going to go back into that same hole I just came out of and put it in another random direction. And I do that just like two or three times so that I know that the tail is never going to come undone because it's not going to get pulled that drastically that the tail is going to pop out. So I'm comfortable with my tail being nice and secure. Again, my starting tail is on the inside of my square, so I can go ahead and cut off. And you have one square done with all the ends woven in. Magic. Okay, so pause the video here and go ahead and make your second square. But when you finish your second square and you sew it across the top, don't weave in the end yet because you're going to need the rest of that end uh, to attach to the next square. So, for example, this is my second square. I'm going to go ahead and sew it across the top, but then I'm going to meet you back and we'll do the next step together once I get to the end of the top right here. So you can go ahead and pause it and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I have my second square all ready to go. I have it closed and stuffed on the top and I have my tail here at the end waiting. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be sewing these two sides together and you can see that my squares are a little bit off measurement. This one's a little taller than this one. I did use different yarn here. They're both cotton, but they're just different yarn brands. But that's okay if they're a slightly different size because when you sew them all together, they're going to be brought all together to the same size. So it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so I still have the tail from this second um, square on my yarn needle and you're going to be looking at <clears throat> the back of the blanket right now. One side of the bl blanket is going to be fairly flat and the other side is going to be puffy and the way that you do this is by not seaming on the very 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 side of the work. You're going to be seaming these two together just barely onto the side of each of these squares. So it brings them a little bit together, making the front side puff out a little bit more. I'll show you here on my blanket. This side of the blanket looks fairly flat. It's all nice and stitched together. This side is the puffy side where you see all of the puff. This is the flat side. So when you're seaming your squares together, you're going to be looking at the back side and you're going to try to get the back as flat as you can to give the most puffiness to the front of the blanket. So I'm going to take my two squares and hold them together and because I'm attached to the white currently I'm going to go to my next square over and anytime you're inserting your yarn needle you want to try to pick up at least two strands at a time so you really secure uh, these two squares together. So I'm going to insert my hook into these two strands here. And again, I'm not working on the very, very side of the square. I'm working just barely onto the back of the square. So I'm going to pick up one thread here and one thread here. This isn't an exact science. You kind of just, um, you kind of just pick squares um, two strands based on where you think your yarn needle should go next. So I have those two in there. And I'm going to come over to my white and find two strands. I'm going to grab these two strands here. Come over to my peach and grab two strands here. And pull my yarn needle through. Come over to my white and find two strands over to my peach and find two strands pull your needle through again finding two on the white finding two on the peach pull through it looks like I can do that one more time so this time I'm going to try to grab the very, very corners of the corner, grab the corner, and pull through. Okay, so now that I'm at the end, I want to just kind of pull 
not really not really cinch it you don't want the corners to get pulled in like this here but you want to pull it so it's nice and secure and snug and I'm going to flip it to the bottom so my white is currently going through the peach I'm going to so you, you can see here that this is the starting chain of this peach one I'm going to stick my um, your needle through this bottom chain here kind of the bottom chain slash the corner somewhere where I can get a good grip on several strands of yarn at a time and I'm going to insert into the bottom chain of the white one kind of just through a little bit again you can stick it just into one or into a couple this is not going to be an exact science and I'm going to pull I'm going to pull that through to attach these two corners together and then you're going to do the same thing that we did at the end of this peach strand. You're going to just kind of run your yarn needle through the stuffing a couple times. Do it in kind of random directions. And that was three or four times, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. And now you have two squares sewn together. So keep in mind, as you're adding squares, you're looking at the back of the blanket. So when you turn it over to the front, this peach one is actually going to be the one on the right side. So if you want it in a certain color order, you have to keep that in mind that you're sewing them together backwards, technically. Okay, so now I'm ready to add my next square. It's the same process you're going to I have my square made already with my long tail. I'll stuff it, sew across the top, and then do the same thing we just did here and sew along the two sides of the square and then hide my tail. And then I'll have this row finished. I'm just gonna do a row of three just as an example today. So I'm gonna finish this one. Um, you go ahead and add as many squares to your row as you would like. And when you're ready with your length, your full length of um, square row that you have, we'll go ahead and do the next step together. <clears throat> okay, so I have my row complete and I also have my second row complete. So when you do your first row, once you attach all your squares, that's all you have to do for the row um, at the time and you can leave it alone. You can go ahead and make your second row and then when you're ready, you can take both rows and I'll be showing you now how to attach these two rows together. So if you haven't made your second row, go ahead and do that and then come back here and we'll be ready to sew these two together. Okay, so since I'm using a ton of different colors, I'm just choosing to use white yarn to sew my rows together just to keep it simple. Um, you will see the stitching on the back a little bit, so I probably wouldn't pick like orange to sew them together. Um, so just keep that in mind. It doesn't make that big of a difference, but um, the stitching will be noticeable from the back of the blanket, not the front side. Okay, so when you're cutting off a piece of yarn for sewing the rows together, you want to do kind of the same thing as the squares. You want to measure out how long your row is, and you want about three times that length of yarn for sewing together. If you have a really, really long row um, and you're worried about all of that yarn getting tangled, um, you can just start with a shorter length and then when you run out, you can attach a new strand of yarn to that one and keep going. But this is a short one, so we can obviously do the whole thing all at once. Okay, so I have the strand that I'm going to be seaming with and again I'm looking at the back of my squares you can tell it's the back because you can see that seam line between each square and the front side is really like floppy and a little extra puffy so I'm looking at the back side I'm gonna go ahead and attach my strand to my yarn needle all right, and you can start on whichever side you're comfortable with. I'm right-handed. I'm going to start on this right side 
that's just what I'm comfortable with. It doesn't really matter if you start on the left side. Um, you do what you want, but start on one end of the blanket. Again, the back side facing up. And you're going to just start by inserting your yarn needle through the very corners of these two squares on the end. pull through and I'm going to tie a little knot and just leave enough to where you can weave in the end of the tail it doesn't have to be super long I'm going to go ahead and do a double knot just for extra security so on the Technically on the first row here, when you're inserting your hook, you want to insert it kind of into that first row through the bottom to where that starting chain is that has the split between the different directions of stitches. So I'm going to insert from like, it's hard to tell on the corners, it'll be easier to see when you get another stitch in, but kind of at the top of that first row down through the very bottom and then on the other side you're going to so this is the very very top of this I'm going to insert my yarn needle through these sets of loops so not through the very very top but you're gonna come from the top side down the side a little bit and this looks really wonky right now but hang with me for just a second and I'll show you. It'll be a little more clear once I go through the next set, I promise. Okay, so I'm looking at this bottom row and I'm gonna go through roughly these two set of loops. Again, it's not super specific on where you go into as long as you're not going through, like you don't wanna go through both sides of the square completely because then the stitching is gonna show through on the front and it's going to make it less puffy. So I just want to go grab somewhere on the back side, go through the very bottom, and find a hole to go through, and pull my yarn needle through. So when I'm sewing the rows together, I'm going to be using the mattress stitch. I personally like the look of the mattress stitch better for seaming the rows together. I'll show you on my blanket again. This is how the whip stitch is going to look. It's going to be this nice, really classic looking stitched look. I'll show you, I first started out trying to do the whip stitch, which is the same way we sewed the squares together, but I just really didn't like how this looked. It's really just an appearance um, preference for me. So again, you can do the whip stitch, but I prefer this more like dainty looking stitching. So that's what I'll show you here. So with the mattress stitch, you go this way, and then you go this way, and then back this way, and you keep switching directions as you go. So I've ended on this tan square, so I'm going to go back down through a set of stitches in the tan square. Again, you're not going through the back of it, you're just going through to the bottom of it. And then through a set of stitches on the orange square. and pull through. And you want it, again, you want it to be snug, but you don't want to pull it so much that it cinches it together like this. You just want to pull it nice and snug so you can't pull the rows apart too much. Okay, so you're gonna continue repeating this method across these first two squares. So back this way. And you're roughly gonna be doing this about 10 times because you have 10 stitches across each square. Okay, it looks like I have maybe one more, one more to go. Go through here. 
I'm going to go through there. Okay, so when you get to the end of a set of squares, you want to really secure all four of these corners together before you move on to the next set of squares. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm, so before I, I move on, I'm going to go back up through this orange square, and you want to grab a really good like chunk of this corner, more than just two loops, and try to do the best you can to get a good grip on that corner. And I'm going to go through this yellow corner now, go up to the yellow. Um, it doesn't matter if you, when you're sewing these two together, it doesn't matter if you end on the orange side or if you end on the tan side. Um, as long as you can secure all four corners together, it doesn't really matter what exactly you do. Um, my first couple rows, I was playing around with how I liked it, and I did it a different way every single time I got to a four corner section. So it doesn't really matter exactly how it goes, but as long as you can do all four corners together, somehow you'll be good. So I'm going from orange to yellow, and then I'm gonna go back over to tan. Again, get a good chunk of that corner. Come on. And then I'm gonna go over down into this white. It'll be hard to tell because I have the white I have white strand. So I'm gonna make sure that I pull this orange to yellow connection very, very tight. So that way I can pull this tan to white connection very, very tight. And then to finish off, I'm gonna go back up from white to yellow. So I have a really, really secure corner here. And now I can keep going across the white and the yellow with the mattress stitch still. So I'll go down into yellow and down into white. And then I'll go up the white and up yellow. You're gonna keep doing that across. So I'll do this across and then I'll show you how I did the corners one more time. Okay, so I'm at the corners again and this time I ended up on the yellow. Um, that's where I'm at the corner on this set of squares. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did with this set of corners, just the opposite way. So I'm gonna go down into yellow and down into the peach, get a good chunk of the corner here. The corners are the most important because that's where a lot of the weight is gonna go when you have the whole blanket seamed up. It's gonna be really heavy and the corners are gonna get a lot of stress. So you wanna have a good seam together on the corners. I'm gonna pull, pull this pink and, or pull this yellow and peach connection so I can pull this white and green connection. Go back down into the peach and then I'm ready to continue and finish out my row. So you're gonna be doing this method with every set of squares, with every set of four corners all the way until you get to the end. You can pause the video here and I'll meet you back at the end of your row. Okay, so I'm at the end of the row. I wanna go back into the very end of my corners. For a nice secure finish. And then I wanna tie this off into a knot so this doesn't become Undone. When I tie knots, I like to split my yarn strands if you can. Some yarns you can't split it, but for this one I like to do that. So um, I'm going to pick up half of these strands, pull through a random loop so that I can tie this into a good knot. And I'm going to do a double knot again. You want it nice. And secure. Okay, so I have my two rows seamed together. Um, when you're done with your rows, you can weave in these two ends. And then 
you have your two rows seamed together. So this is the front of my blanket. It looks nice and puffy. Um, you can see here when you curl it back, you can see the corner crossing a little bit. You can see the stitches a tiny bit, but when it's just sitting here, you shouldn't really be able to see any of the stitching together at all. So it just looks like these squares are just nice and stuck together. Alright, so that is the end of the crochet puff quilt tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, please leave a comment if you enjoyed this pattern, if it made sense to you. If you end up making this, I'd love to see photos. You can tag me on Facebook, you can tag me on Instagram. I have all of my info linked down in the description box below. Uh, I'd love to see your beautiful quilts. Uh, thanks so much again and have a great day.